We have a Olin's road and track fork in the vise and we're going to show you how to disassemble the fork, make sure you drain all the oil properly, remove the fork seal and dust cover, and then go ahead, reinstall new fork oil seal, new fork dust cover, reset the oil level correctly, and then reassemble the fork. So this will be kind of a halfway tear down because we're not going to pull the cartridge out and check all the valving and do go that deep into this particular fork. So with an Olin's fork, before you do anything else, you have to make sure that all the preload is removed from the fork itself. So it's very important that you not only remove it all, but you also count where you're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you've got to be very careful that you don't just fly around like this because these caps are very thin threads. So we have seven turns. So in order not to forget that, out comes our trusty Sharpie. Preload, seven. Now the nice thing about the rebound cap circuit is that unlike most normal forks where you have to remove all the rebound, reinstall it, put it back to the same number you want it to go. We don't have to do that with this particular fork cap. So that's really nice. However, we still need to know where we're at. So let's see where we're at on rebound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, 13, 14, 14 out on rebound. So before we go any further, uh, 14, put it back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And just so we have all the information, we, we should also see where we are on compression damping, which is at the bottom of the fork. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's see, fourteen. Now we have a permanent record on the fork of exactly where the settings were when we started, so that these forks can go back to the owner with exactly the same settings as they came in with. Don't worry about the Sharpie, some parts cleaner will take that right off and it won't hurt the anodization either, so no big fuss there. Now special tools are required for these fork caps simply because instead of being able to use a regular wrench, the wrench only works on the preload adjuster. The cap itself has basically cores drilled into it, so you need a specialty tool, it's required. Now Owings makes it, you can get other tools elsewhere. We have a kind of a universal tool that has pins on it. This will open and close to various diameters so it makes it very usable for multiple different applications, not just Owens. So, special tool required, make sure you have it. If you don't have it, something simple as this is great. So, the pins sit in the holes, obviously 180 degrees apart so you have good leverage. Our Motion Pro vise is nice and snug, but not over tight. And it doesn't require, fortunately, too much force, but sometimes you even need heat to break these free because it's been so long. So now we'll unscrew the fork cap. And you'll hear it click and the cap sit down again, so that's disengaged from the threads. So at this point we're done with a special tool. Go ahead and sit it up, position it in the vise to expose our internals. Now this is where it gets messy and dirty and filthy. What you can see is the fork spring on the outside, then a spacer which sits on top, and then the cap and spacer. In between, you can see a rod. That's the rebound rod, which is actually this filthy white plastic thing here that's covered with metal debris. So the rod attaches to the cap, and that's what keeps the whole assembly at the top of the fork together. We have to get in here with a wrench. And with these forks, this is very physical labor. Make no mistake about it, you need a lot of hand strength, and you need quite a bit of arm strength just because of the stress you're going to use to pull it all apart. 
So we need a 17 millimeter wrench. And what you're going to have to do is grab the spring and spacer, pull the cap up, <clears throat> and sit the wrench on the nut. Sounds pretty simple, and when I do it, it'll look pretty easy. But when you try and do this yourself, it will require a lot of physical effort if you're doing it yourself. If not, and you have somebody that can help you, you can quite simply pull it apart, give somebody else the wrench, and they slide the wrench in. So if you got a good buddy, have them come over and help you with this because it'll make life a lot easier. So let's get the wrench in place. Now we need to remove the fork cap from the assembly. So with our 17 millimeter wrench in place holding the jam nut, that's what it's called, we need to go ahead and remove the cap away. So make sure the fork's snug turn away from each other. Now the cap is loose, so let's go ahead and remove the ratchet and take off the cap. Set that aside. Now we need to pull out the rebound rod and we'll stick that in the sink to drain. Now you can see a ton of metal debris on the bottom of that, which is not good. We know at the bottom of the fork there's a lot of this mud and paste sitting there. So these forks are going to have to drain for quite a long time to get all that sludge out. We got rid of our wrench. <clears throat> and now we have to basically get the nut that is now clearly visible off the rebound rod so we can remove the spacer and the spring. Again, this requires quite a bit of effort and hand strength in terms of holding the rod up and spinning the nut. <clears throat> 